The Lost Saga of One Piece has been leaked. Well, apparently. If these are real, the worst forum and redditor, Go D. Roger, is getting sparked out by Oda himself. But with this insane theory of the final saga, I am going to break down how it makes sense and if it's actually even possible. This includes moments such as number one, Luffy going back in time. Number two, Joy Boy and MD Judas were brothers. Number three, the world of One Piece started in space. And number four, devil fruits are made from Haki. This theory starts with the idea of time travel. With Luffy going back 900 years before the void century. Time travel has already been introduced by Oda through Toki's devil fruit being able to send users forwards in time. We have been theorizing Luffy with his Gear 5 awakening will gain the power to manipulate the space-time fabric. Our reasoning was based on Luffy being able to share the stretching properties of his devil fruit to other objects including plasma like he did with lightning to even abstract entities like his Haki. So the concept of stretching time could very well be possible but my idea of it wasn't really alluding to time travel rather it was just a method to fight against his opponents being only a short span of slowing or rapidly pacing between moments by stretching or recoiling space time however going back 900 years sounds ridiculous Right? According to these unconfirmed leaks, it all becomes very possible after learning True Awakening. No way! Yes, True Awakening is a new concept that will be introduced, explaining how the full power of an awakening is supposed to be used. And that's when different users combine the Devil Fruit abilities to create a new power altogether. And to create such a power to go back 900 years, Wigapunk merges Luffy's Nika awakening to stretch and recoil things, with Bonnie's Devil Fruit ability to change the age of an object or person, with Frankie's Pawpaw fruit that allows the user to make intangible things into tangible things. Oh, yeah, yeah, I forgot to mention Frankie somehow will get Kuma's devil fruit, who unfortunately dies <laughs> after saving Bonnie. Logically, this all makes sense as the combination of these three devil fruits could allow time as an intangible and abstract entity becomes something tangible. Then, with Bonnie's fruit, this so called tangible time can be regressed to a specific year and with Luffy's fruit he can stretch it open and jump right into that moment of time. Regardless this happens and in doing so Luffy goes back 900 years and 9 months from the current time. This was in an era before the war between the ancient kingdom and allied nations. A time before Joy Boy's promise and before any betrayal. Comparatively to our own world One Piece takes place between the 17th and 18th century. Oda led us to believe that the current era of One Piece was at the peak of their technology with Vegapunk leading the forefront of science. But from chapter 1070 we learned that the One Piece world is actually a post-apocalyptic world. 900 years ago the technology of the One Piece world was at its peak and Luffy lands right in the middle of it all. The technological advancement wasn't the only thing that was different about this time. Rather the kingdom itself is massive as the continent in which it governs spans across nearly half of the world. It includes current places like Albaf, Wano and spans all the way to Whiskey Peak. Roadstar Island is not part of this continent but is a place where you need to pass through in order to reach the capital of the kingdom. After getting the gist of this new world or shall I say old, Luffy steps into the ancient kingdom and by fate of destiny would meet two brothers. The older crown prince Im and the younger prince Dairis. Im would obviously go on to become Imusama, whilst the younger brother Dairis is the joy boy of his time, bearing the Nika fruit. Now Dairis being the younger brother was considered rambunctious, childlike and very playful, often attributed to a monkey. In fact, that was his epithet, whereas Imu was considered the wise, as he was the more elegant and thoughtful thinker. Sadly, their relationship was shrouded by jealousy 
jealousy and betrayal. A complete 180 from Luffy and his brothers. For an unknown reason, the king decided to name the younger prince Dyrus as the next heir to the throne. This decision would enrage fire into the heart of Imu. Not only was he older, but also deemed his brother irresponsible and stupid. stupid. So in anger, Imu set a coup against his own family, all to steal the crown and take the position as king of the world. To do this, he secretly enlisted the help of 20 other nations to overthrow the current system of orders. When Luffy arrives back in the past, he wanders in a garden where he barely misses meeting Dyrus, who is running around catching a rare butterfly. This is a massive throwback to the first time we are introduced to Imu in the room of flowers, holding a butterfly, possibly even remembering his long lost brother. Now during the insane encounter, the one thing that stood out was that Luffy and Dyrus are very similar in nature, which was even noticed by Imu who was shocked to hear two synergized heartbeats. In fact, they were so much alike that both their silhouettes were indistinguishable, looking like Sun God Nika. The only significant difference between the two was that Luffy's scar under his eye was on the opposite side for Dyrus. Now, we don't know everything that went down between them, but what we do know is that the last words Luffy said to Dyrus before being pulled back to the future was I'm sorry. It's likely Luffy had a time limit due to Bonnie's fruits limitation as we learn in chapter 1072. She can regress things only temporarily. However, what is certain is that Luffy's time travel experience had left an impact that would influence the course of history. You see, to disguise himself, Luffy was wearing a helmet. But when he was puffed back into the future, it dropped. Emu didn't see Luffy's face but saw the straw hat that was revealed before he disappeared. Appeared. As we come to the present, we move to the room of flowers where Imu thinks back to the first time he sees that straw hat, feeling sure that Shanks is the man he saw talking to his brother 900 years ago. We then learn of Imu's obsession with the straw hat, as later Dyrus would go on to dawn his own, being the stretched out one we see in Mary Joa. Luffy affecting the fate of the current world wasn't the only thing we came to know. We also learned the origins of everything. Thing. Even though the ancient kingdom itself was a massive supercontinent, different islands had their own unique magnetic materials within them. Where amongst all the lands, Roadstar Island has the highest level of magnetic material. And the reason for this was due to its origins of descending from space. Yep, Roadstar Island does not originate from Earth. It's a celestial body with a composition vastly different from those in the One Piece world. In fact, in the past, when water flowed downstream from Roadstar, some of the magnetic materials would be carried along. This would consequently be deposited to the nearest supercontinent of the ancient kingdom. Thus, it had received the highest deposit density while whilst the furthest end of the supercontinent had the lowest. This is similar to how in our own world we find gold on the banks of rivers where tiny specks get washed downstream. But with Roadstar as a magnetic anchor point, a geographer proposed by using magnets it would always point in a direction of the highest level of magnetic pull. Thus, the log post was created. With this new tool, people were now able to traverse the entire world without getting lost. But what if I told you that Roadstar Island wasn't the only thing that was sent from the heavens above? A long time ago, before the rise of the ancient kingdom civilization, the environment was much harsher than the present. But above the sky lived other civilizations on different planets. One being a common reference is Fairy Worth, where the space people originated. More than 900 years ago, a group of the ancestors to the Skypians, Lunarians, and even Minx sailed down to the blue sea below. They descended to the planet within the ship called Uranus, the weaponized spaceship capable of mass destruction using electricity as the main energy source. In fact, electricity played a huge importance to the people of fairy worth which would go on to explain the automata's nl would encounter later on the minx were even blessed with the gift of electricity that 
save their species. We can allude their civilization was ending and the people had to migrate. As a parting gift, a baby Zunesha was given to them to bring down below. The other species from space moved to settle in different parts of the world, where the Lunarians chose to make their home on top of the red line. Across the supercontinent, another group of space people saw the sea dwellers living in harsh conditions with lack of warmth, food and even water. This led to the constant spread of diseases and death. Being a kind group, they shared many of their advancements, specifically special plant seeds from Fairy Worth, which grew to be the Adam and Eve tree. The Eve tree wasn't originally so large, nor was it actually buried under water. Rather, the sea levels highly differed from the present time and due to its constantly seeking the sunlight for more than a thousand years, it grew to be over 10,000 meters long. The benefits provided by the trees caused people to start praying under them. Then one day, a special fruit was born, then a second one, third and a fourth. These fruits were birthed through the desires and dreams of the prayers from the collective people. This was the early stage of Haki, where the will of the collective would manifest into reality as the tree would absorb their hockey and use it to fulfill their wishes. Those of you who have already smashed the notification bell would know that this finally bounces off our prediction of how devil fruits were created. Also, it turns out that the real reason that devil fruit users sinks into the sea is because they have an ancient longing desire to return back to the original soil, which is thousands of feet below the current sea. So what happened next? Well, these four fruits that were created were considered god fruits. Fruits. Each fruit represented an essence of life and survival. The first gave the ability to create, the second gave the ability to nurture, the third the ability to sustain, and the fourth to live. The users of these fruits in time are all known as God of the Earth, God of the Forest, God of Rain, and God of Sun respectively. These ancient gods are still worshipped to this day in Skypea. As time went on and lives improved, people's desires grew, resulting in the growth of greed as well. And what follows greed? in a society, well, decadence, which caused the great fall to happen. Fueled by these desires, many fruits started to give unheard of abilities based on what people wanted. That's how you get stuff like the jacket fruit. This was the time when certain devilish fruits were also born, where they gave the user the ability to destroy and take things, known as the Yami Yami no Mi in the current story. These fruits would be known as devil fruits. However, in order to counter this evil, many guardian fruits were spawned such as Yamato's Okuchi no Nakami. Finally, these two sides clashed in a great war, but don't confuse it with the one that happened 900 years ago. This battle of the fruits was in the era before the dawn of the ancient kingdom. Fortunately, the guardians came out as victorious, where the four gods defeated the ultimate evil causing the Yami Yami no Mi and countless other dangerous fruits to be hidden. This also led to the ancient kingdom to be created, where a few hundred years later, we come to our story of Dire aka Joy Boy and Emu. After Luffy warped away from the past, Emu stole Uranus from the ancient kingdom and began his coup along with the 20 nations and the Figureland family who actually pushed the idea of making him king. This is the same family that was revealed in One Piece Red to be Shanks' family. No wonder the Gorosei had so much respect for him. The leaders of these nations considered themselves as gods of the One Piece world and to symbolize their godhood status, they started wearing the bubble mask. Zunisha, who's around a century old at this point, served as the guardian of Wano. A part of Emu's plan was to trick Zunisha with the help of his own devil fruit, which in turn caused Zunisha to end up betraying the shogun. Due to him being unable to protect a certain something, Zunisha was exiled from Wano, ordered to never stop walking till another head of the clan allows him to stop. Emu then used Uranus on the ancient kingdom, forcing it to split into various fragments on the earth. The use of this titanic weapon destroyed the frozen ice which acted as a dam that held on a immense amount of fresh water. The remnants of the ancient kingdom that became individual islands either sank or drifted into different directions. This catastrophic event caused a massive ice age that lasted for the entirety of the void century. This ice age was the leading factor that caused various unexplainable climactic phenomena all over the world. This is also the reason why the Grand Line has 
such supernatural conditions even 900 years into the future. The constant use of Uranus caused an undersea volcano to erupt at the center of the Earth. Consequently, this bombardment shrouded the ozone of the planet, causing an ice age. With temperature hitting below freezing, the magma rocks that surfaced from the volcanic eruption froze at the surface of the Earth, thus creating the red line and reverse mountain. The use of Uranus on the ancient kingdom even caused the entire planet's axis to shift. This resulted in the fresh water that was broken off at the start of the ice age to ignore the laws of gravity and started flowing upwards. Thus, decades later, creating the weird upward stream of reverse mountain, giving its namesake. As more and more water flowed upwards, the consistent gust of water kept pushing aside the surroundings. And some other anime bullshit signs, okay? That's how the calm belt was formed. Trust me. However, the destruction of the frozen ice caused massive tsunamis that launched various materials from the Earth's surface to the sky, bringing about dark, polluted clouds to cover it entirely, including the light emitting from the sun. And hence, the entire world had to deal with 100 years of darkness in the Ice Age. During this time, the previous Poseidon named Agashi emerged from Fishman Island and with the help of the giant ship Noah, retrieved many artifacts from the ancient kingdom. One such artifact was the poneglyph that Robin found 900 years later. This poneglyph was a letter sent by Joy Boy to Agashi, apologizing for not keeping his promise, which was to destroy the red line and bring the water level down back to the original level so that the sun directly shines on the people of Fishman Island. This puts forth a notion that Fishman Island was the original sea level 800 to 900 years back and that the sea forest was originally on land but sank due to the rising water. In a follow-up letter, Joy Boy promised that a certain individual will come by and make do with his promise in 800 years, referring to Joy Boy's reincarnation of Monkey D. Luffy. Though from here on out, it is unknown what happened to Dyrus and how he succumbed to his older brother, but what we do know is that rumors spread at the time that Joy Boy would return due to the Poneglyphs spreading across the world. Emu, afraid that his brother would come after his seat, started an era known as the Great Cleansing. Wano also closed its borders to protect Pluton from Emu, which was the only remaining weapon left behind by the ancient kingdom. The world government was then formed, where immediately after, Marie Joie was built atop the Red Line, with 19 of the 20 leaders of the kingdoms moving in along with Emu. This was to represent that gods always ascend, so they were seated at the highest point of the world. Around this time, the immortal surgery was performed on Emu with the help of the Ope Ope no Mi, and thus made him immortal. During the 100 year ice age, or as we know it, the void century, many of Joy Boy's allies were hunted down and executed. Dyrus' nickname Monkey was then passed on to his descendants who used this epithet as their family name, all to avoid causing any suspicion on themselves due to the mass cleansing. It's also implied the followers of Dyrus would add a D to their name and their family's name so his will can never be forgotten, hence the will of D. But the great cleansing caused deaths on both sides, as Dyrus' comrades took down many allies of the 20 nations as well. Furthermore, due to the 100 years of cold winter, the dead bodies from both sides did not decompose, but rather froze. The bodies of certain known individuals were honored in secret. However, when this news reached the ears of Emu and the world government, Emu instructed his advisors to steal these bodies away and store them in the giant freezer we see in Marie Joie's basement today. But not only that, only a certain man made the energy source that could literally power Uranus. Yes, the godly power of the ancient kingdom was only able to to operate through this energy source and when not in use was stored in the giant freezer. But before we can get into the details of this giant freezer and what exactly Luffy did after going back to his time, why not watch this video and click the notification bell to be prepared as soon as part 2 of this massive theory comes out. 